is that Thanos sticking his finger up at me, or is he yes. just threatening me? That's, That's true. not a middle finger, though, is it? No, it's not. Um, well, it could be if you want to think about it like that. I, I've had enough provocation from that man for a lifetime. A man thing, I should say. Hey, listen, I, I actually, um, I really do have a bunch of questions, so let me just jump I'm in. Going a it. You know, I will just my time, so don't worry about it. As, yeah, by the way, if they wrap me, feel free to give me an extra minute. I really do I have. I will, don't worry. Uh, the, uh, you remember when we were on the rooftop at Bad Robot and we talked about Doctor Strange? You were the guy. You were the credit oh, for Doctor Strange. You completed the guy for that. Well, it was me and Jim, but it wasn't just me. But I just want to bring... So this is a repeat of that moment. Have you heard that people... Have you been watching The Mandalorian? Uh, no, no, actually, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. I'm trying to catch up with films this year to, to vote for the BAFTAs and the Oscars. So um, I, don't know, I can't do a lot of the BAFTAs because, fortunately, we have been nominated in the Mauritanian. So that's a little plug there. But, yeah, no, I, that's a way of saying I haven't had much TV time and because I'm making Doctor Strange. So, sure. yeah, I've got, well, that, just... I've got that stored up trees. Why? Why? What are they saying? I, I was going to say that there's, there's a lot of people that would like you to play a character called Grand Admiral Thrawn. And I'm just curious if you've heard people saying this because he, I could see you playing this role. Grand, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yes. Okay. What, what, and what does he, does he turn into Peter Cushing or something? Is that? No, it's a, he's, oh, he's blue. He, he's a very cool character. That's a villain that would, you'd be under like a blue makeup thing. Anyway, I'm just curious if-, if I think that's uh, that, that's a straight no for me right now. I, 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 there's no way I want to be turned blue. I could turn the air blue very, very recently, but no, no, seriously, I I, I, I have precious time with my children. And uh, I think sitting in a makeup show being painted blue and the amount of time it would take to do that and then take it off the end of the day might, might just, it's not the right time in my life for that. <laughs> Completely get it. Real fast, um, as a huge fan of your work on Sherlock, do you think that chapter has been closed or do you think there's still more Sherlock in your future? Oh, I don't know. I'm the worst person to ask on this because, uh, you know, I, I never say never, obviously. Um, but I, I don't know. And we, we, I'm the most person to ask because I'm making my slate's pretty, pretty full at the moment, as is Martin and all the other key players involved. So who knows? I mean, I, I get it. one day uh, if, if the script's right and... Um, and I say the script, maybe it could be a film rather than the series. Who knows? Um, but anyway, not for now. Sure. Um, I really, as you know, I'm a huge fan of your work. I think, I think that Courier is so well done. And I think you did such a great job. And one of the things I think is the best part of it is that it doesn't rely on car chases or big action to tell this story. It's, you know, it's about people. Um, yeah. Can you sort of yeah. talk about that aspect of the film? Sure. Well, thank you, first of all, for what you said. Um, I'm very flattered. And, I, I, you know, it, it is about people. You're quite right. And I think even though it's a very specific genre and era as well that we do know as far as the, the, the key world stage players of Kennedy and Khrushchev and that game of uh, terrifying chess they played with mutually assured destruction between Russia and America over the Cuban Missile Crisis, the backroom antics and, and happenings and characters such as Greville Wynn and Pankowski, they are known, but but not so much to our generation, I think, and historically they're often overlooked. Uh, certainly this was the first I'd, I'd heard of them. And for me, the real attraction to the project was to see this everyman transform into uh, someone who is adept at a spycraft and, and then and from very ordinary beginnings becoming an extraordinary human being, performing uh, an act of... Uh, selfless and highly risky courage by trying to rescue his friend at the end of the film. And I think, you know, he came from a humble Welsh background. He was um, dyslexic to the point of near illiteracy. He was a gift of the gap salesman who was always looking to um, better himself from his mother's forceful uh, uh, imprint on his childhood to, to even the tie he wears uh, in our film. It was a note of fascination for me. All the pictures I did in research or saw in research rather, he was wearing the same uniform and it is like a uniform or a costume, uh, even for him. It, 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 and I, I investigate the tie is the Nottingham University Engineering Club tie. He never went to Nottingham University. He never was a member of that club. And that not being a member of the club is kind of where he was at. He was an outsider, but aspiring to something that he wasn't. And that, that's, that's obviously quite rich terrain to become a spy. And you look at the recruitment drive that Cambridge had, Cambridge spies and, how it was very much around um, homosexual circles, a, a society of men that had to bury so much of their life anyway in secrecy that they were perhaps born to carry out a, another duty or um, a, a task with 
secrecy being in their blood in their in their everyday life and he didn't belong to a club he was an outsider and i think that is often a key element for being a, a, a successful spy or learning how to be that to feel that you are outside of any rules or belonging that you can do things on your own and you know having said all of that it's for me it's really about the relationship as well with penkovsky these two men they shared some some appetites and some human frailties uh a love of liquor and and fine times but also a real driver was i think the need to secure peace in that time for their families as well as their nations in the world and I think it's unthinkable how isolating that experience must have been. Uh, they, they really, apart from occasionally the handlers, had only had each other to talk to, to, to relate to about the predicament they were in, couldn't tell their families for obvious reasons. So the, the complexity, the, the closeness of that, I mean, that's another thing, I guess, that drives it away from the usual spy thriller. Um, and yet there are all these elements of the ticking bomb aspect of, are they going to get found out? Are they going to get away with it? And just when you think, oh, mission completed, they've kind of done it. Uh, he goes back to rescue his friend, this incredible selfless act. Now, you know, this is a moment in history and it's one guy, but it, it, I think it does relate to now, it does relate to what we're seeing across the board during this pandemic, but also in social movements like Black Lives Matter and um, hashtag me too, but also environmental movements even. I mean, Greta sitting outside of school turning into a, 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 you know, a global phenomenon and her becoming a spokesperson for an entire generation on the issue of the global climate crisis. And, it's the idea that it doesn't matter how disenfranchised or powerless or small you may feel or how insignificant you may feel, how out of control your world and your circumstance may feel, you can still do remarkable things and affect real change in people and societies in the world at large. And they did that. They averted the Third World War, the nuclear crisis that was imminent and by selfless actions and putting themselves at risk. And I think we've seen already huge numbers behind the numbers of stories that are heartbreaking and inspiring and fuel you for hope really in humanity in, the, in their acts of selflessness and courage and um, volunteerism and community orientated work um, in terms of people who have stepped up to the plate during the pandemic um, but also like I said the other movements as well um, protest movements political movements and social movements that are shaping change um, but also people who are doing it without any idea they're doing it or just doing it gracefully without any desire for acknowledgement. The, the silent heroes of legions of people who have kept this whole thing going, whether they're delivery men and women or cleaners or all the frontline um, workers, clinicians um, on the front line of the health care crisis and uh, pandemic outbreak. You know, it's it's been a remarkable show of heroism across the board and ordinary people doing extraordinary things. So my point is, I think despite it being of its era and despite him being of his time, it has real currency in this current moment. A hundred percent. I could ask you 50 other questions. I know you have to go, but do you mind me asking a Marvel question just because? I mean, we know what a dead end it's going to be, but yes, of course you can waste your time asking a Marvel question. <laughs> Well, um, this is, it's a two-parter. I'm just curious if you have filmed your Spider-Man stuff yet and what was your reaction looking at that script? And for Doctor Strange, I, I'm curious if you could sort of talk about working with Sam Raimi because so many of us are so excited that he is doing an MCU movie. And I'm just, if you could sort of talk about working with him. Uh, Spider-Man, yes and no. Uh, Sam, amazing. And, uh, you know, he's so collaborative and, uh, God, he comes with, the, you know, the baggage of an icon. I mean, he's just, he's an incredible uh, force in, 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 in our, well, in, especially in this genre. Um, but he's so humble. He's so nice. He's so appreciative. You really want to serve him. And, and boy, when he's happy, you, you know you've done something right. And um, he's so good at getting it there and getting it there. You know, uh, we've, 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 it's been a very, very collaborative process, this one. Um, you know, our origin stories, I guess, and obviously the beasts that were the Avengers films to be part of were, were, were a thrill, but you're kind of just along for the ride. You just, you're, oh, okay, and, and you do the best with what you've already got given to do. And second time around, there's a bit more of like, so what do you want? do and how do we you know how we go about solving this so it, it feels very creative uh scary so sometimes um but it's 
you know, we're well into it now. We've been shooting it since before Christmas. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a long shoot, not least because of all the restrictions and, and the amazing amount of sacrifice being made in this bizarro world we find ourselves in. But uh, it's working. And I feel very safe on set. This incredible test and tracing system they've got up really is a gold standard. And um, I haven't had to turn my shirt off and shout at people yet. Um, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> well, the thing about Sam, though, is that he also does really cool camera angles. Anyway, yeah. I know you got it. He does, no, he does. No, I can't, please let me just say one more thing. Yes, he does. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, um, thank you so much. Always so a pleasure. You and uh, I'll, I'll see you on the next one. You yeah, see you, on the, see you on the roof of Rad Bad Robot soon. I hope. That would be nice.